exactly exactly where we left off at last week guys Zach why does my camera look like it's a little off Son of a oh I hate everything oh I hate everything oh. okay there oh there we go that's perfect every single solitary time my camera moves okay what do we do what do we do oh what do we do Duh. all in good times okay so what are we gonna do here we're gonna oh, oh this catastrophe of a uh, what is it that you wish to learn? Jeez. Here you are. The hideaway. Established under the leadership of Clive Rosefield, who took to the title of Sid after his former leader's passing, and Titan's destruction of the old hideaway. Here a community of like-minded individuals from across the realm has gathered to, bu to build a place where the people can live and die on their own terms. Like its predecessor, it is built from, uh, within fallen ruins deep within the deadlands, deadlands of Central Storm. Decidedly unlike its predecessor, however, it is isolated in the center of a lake. Like that's gonna stop, what's his name? Shh, Titan. Across uh, whose waters may be invade an enemy can easily be spotted long before their arrival. What will it stop? Nothing. Capital no longer. Former capital of Holy Empire is in Breek. After a mother crystal was. After his mother crystal was destroyed and attacked by Sid the outlaw <laughs> in the year 873, the decision was made to move the throne and her army south to the Christian Dominion. Regardless of whether or not the Dominion's citizens approved, Oriflame has since fallen gradually into decline, having lost the mother's blessings and all the benefits it brought. Ooh, interesting. Foreman house, uh, Farman house located in the field of the royal, not far from some Breek. Residents harbor a strong hatred for bearers, even more than elsewhere in the empire, making it a very dangerous. Yep. The breadbasket. Region overlooking the Strait of Alta, Alta, in the eastern part of Sambrig, the bounty provided this by its rich soil fed the empire for generations until the ever encroaching blight intervened, displacing thousands of in the process of disturbance, which played no small part in the troubles that were later to engulf the imperial capital. Once uh, a once independent state straddling the continents of Storm and Ash, its capital, a twin side, is built on the tiny isles of Ark, from which its mother crystal, Drake's Tail, rises. After Drake's head was destroyed in 873, the Holy Empire Sambrique declared twin side its new capital in defiance of the long standing non aggression treaty. While controversial, the, m the move Carried out by Prince Dion and the Knights of Dragoon, proceeded mostly un unopposed, largely due to the dom dom Dominion's lack of dominance of its own, with uh, with which to intimidate the in interlopers. <sighs> the sole surviving nation of Ash, Waylude has its capital on Stor Stonar 
home to the mother crystal of Drake's spine, and it's ruled over by it is ruled over by Barnabas Tom Tarmer, dominant of Odin and warden of darkness, who has long harbored ambitions of exceeding its reach into the neighboring continent of storm. Somewhat surprising, Sambrik's uh, Sambrikois Empire's incursion into the crystalline dominion prompted no immediate response from the king, who appears to be biding time and considering his next move. Ooh. Places move, places move. Take Sid's name. Takes Sid's name. Five years have passed since Sid died, and Clive had taken over where his friend left off. He and Jill's journey to Constance, 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 a ramshackle refugee se uh, settlement in Dalmicia, where a local informer reports that Hugo Cupus. Minions are holding a group of bearers hostage. In pursuit of Sid. A nation formed by a federation of five smaller states. It is located in the southern half of the continent of Storm. And its capital is of Randia. Also home to the mother crystal known as Drake's Fang. Inside which stands Castle Dasbog. Home of Hugo Cupa. Kind of sounds like King Cupa. Cupa. Dominant of Titan. Cupa. Obsessed with finding Sid and exacting his revenge for the murder of Benita Harmon. Who opted the soldiers of the realm and had them commit a series of, of atrocities. An attempt to flush him out of hiding. Damn. Oh, is the timeline eight sixty? <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. Okay. The well. state of the realm is ever changing, Clive. Hold on, I've seen Here something. for another of my lectures. Allow me to educate you. Past lessons? Yes, perhaps a little revision might not go amiss. After Clive returns from his ill-starred adventures in Constance, he visits Vivian for a review of the state to realm to follow the Drake's Head Empire's invasion. What? Long though Sambrek's dominion over northeastern storm has endured. Recent okay. days have seen the blight wrest ever more land from her grasp. For which reason she has continued to wage war on her rival across the strait, hoping to claim less blackened pastures. But Odin would sooner pawn his sword than Walud relinquish Ash. And the Empire pays dearly for every blade of grass bent beneath Sambriqua boots. Little wonder then that Sylvester set his sights on the crystalline dominion. An altogether easier target, possessed of no less ether. It was five years ago, while you were busying yourself with the destruction of Drake's head, that the Empire made its move, subjugating its theretofore neutral neighbor. A nation which could legitimately claim to be the center of the world. Certainly, there is no better place to stage an army. From there, the Holy Empire's reach spans the Twins. The Non-Aggression Treaty was the only thing keeping them in check. 
But if they truly broke the pact without provocation, it is only a matter of time before others reply in kind. The Holy Empire, the Dalmechian Republic, Grab the Kingdom of Walud, and of course, our Walud. friends in Yara. Walud. Who will be left standing, I wonder, when the last drop of blood is spilled? Ooh. That's actually pretty badass. Yeah, I'm a little sore. I'm a little sore from yesterday. A little sore and a little burnt. I am burnt up, dudes. That sun is hot. I have the details here. Ultima. An, over, an otherworldly being that Clive encountered in the inner sanctums of Drake's head. He addressed Clive as Mythos before attempting to merge their consciousnesses. However, Clive was able to summon the will to resist the creature before Joshua returned from the dead to imprison it in a cage of flame that he sealed away in his own heart. We know where it is heading. He's gonna have to fight his brother. The state of the realm is ever changing, Clive. Let's freaking go. All operations are suspended until further notice. Yes, Captain. I'll let the others know. You do that. You do that now. Beautiful. So beautiful. Ooh. Oh, I gotta get that one. Twenty three hundred. Twenty twenty. Clive, is everything all right? Oh, you gonna have something to say? Look, it's Sid. Staying long this time? Maybe. Maybe, baby. Everyone seems so happy to see us. It's good to be home. Tis that is. Does that one have blood on it? Maybe, baby. And what can I do for you? Let's see what you then. got again. Hmm. Oh, I got thirty one thousand. Finished, are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're back. You. You, uh, you didn't happen to run out of potions while you are away, did you? We've a fine selection of tonics and tink uh, tinctures. Uh, oh, perhaps you'd be interested in some new accoutrement. Uh, uh, couldn't... Um... Gear. He's so silly. Clive. What's that for, you, dear? Blacksmith. Oh, 
I need a lightning shard. Ooh. That it? I'm fine. If you told me you could fire a forge without a crystal or a bearer before I came here, I would have taken you for a madman. But no, here it is. As hither yon dance autumn winds atop the rotten peel Of Sid's return the faithful sing across the blighted meal I ah, see you ain't gotten no better, huh? Inside an airship. Said it was called the Invincible. Yeah. Look how far that got. Can't be that invincible. Norseman Harpocrates. Hey! Use it live. It is a name I have not heard for a long time. So long, in fact, I had half forgotten it was mine. Oh, God, you old home, fart. Clive. You were missed, as always. I believe this belongs to you. Vivian asked me to return it. Ready? <laughs> Our resident scholar devours books. Faster than young Tet does lemon tarts. Would <laughs> that I could do the same. But alas, I no longer possess the necessary constitution for such indulgence, either in words or tarts. That said, I have continued my search for mention of the creature you encountered at Drake's Head. But without access to the great libraries of Oriflam or the Dominion, I regret that I have been able to find little and less. I am sorry. Please, don't apologize. I'll send word to our associates. See if they can't furnish you with more books. I fear it is not more books that I require, but the right ones. Mayhap we look in the wrong places. There are still libraries to the north. I'll see what I can do. You are too kind. There are not many in this world who would indulge the whims of a tired old historian. Not too tired to go filching Kubo nuts, though. Always got a pocket for him. Nix him off the Moogle. Hush now. Uh, the new Moogle. You know there's no such thing as Moogles. <laughs> the twins seem well. Aye. Yet they laugh far too little for one so young. Oh. The loss of their parents weighs heavy on them. However well they hide it, Titan took much from us that night, from some more than others, and the wounds that remain. They are not quick to heal. Which is why we must give them all the time they need. That we must. Just as I must give you the time you need to recuperate. Good day, Clive. Good day. Good day, sire. Gav will be back soon. I should get some rest while I can. How good it is to see you, Clive. I still remember. Oh, great. So I remember the day I first met Tet and Crow, chasing their father about the hideaway one moment, clinging to their mother's kirtle the next. The twins' love of the parents was something to behold, so fierce and pure. When they passed, I feared the void they left in the children's lives could never be filled. Neither spoke nor smiled for years, hiding themselves away in the shelves to bury their sorrows in the leaves of these tombs. And thank goodness they did. For I believe the stories proved a welcome distraction. As over time their pain faded, and now they laugh and frolic as they once did, if not with more vigor. They remind us that no matter how deep our wounds, we all have the capacity to heal. And that happiness lost, 
may be found again. It has been difficult, certainly. When Titan visited his wrath upon us on the dreadful night, we lost much. He, ro he robbed us not only of our homes and our loved ones, but with which Sid fought fiercest to preserve our hope. Hope that we might never have found again had you not taken his name become our light in the darkness. Had you not let us hear. Our to Bunamir and the invincible wear among the ghosts of the fallen, our journey can continue. Here in the belly of the Leviathan, untouched by the passing of a thousand years, does our hope burn brighter than ever, and here it may burn for a thousand more. Look around you. Why is a far cry from the Imperial Liberty of Aura Flame? In five short years, we have amassed more volumes than most men or men and women might, have, might hope to see in their lifetime. No longer are the tales that they contain hidden away in all but for the privilege to have liberated them, that they may fill the, the minds of all who hunger for knowledge. Still. Still, there is much more out there. As long as I draw breath, I shall continue to gather what I can. Why, one day, a chronicle of our own adventures might even grace these shelves or fell in that the floor. <clears throat> I have a few new notes that might interest you. If you have a question for me, I should be happy to answer it. <laughs> Said the outlaw. Leader of the fraction of the faction believed responsible for the shattering of Drake's head in 873, with a single act of infamy, Sid's name quickly spread to the four corners of Valestine and beyond. A scholar and a strategic and strategist who makes her home in the hideaway, analyzing every shred of information that comes in from the wider world in order to divine the the dispositions of the realm's armies and those who lead them. She offers her insight to Clive that she might better understand the lay of the land. The monocure of nine tales of which she herself is fond was gifted by her fellow scholars in recognition of her ability to speak at length on almost any subject. Victor, a friend of Sid's and later Clive's who keeps an ever uh, attentive vi vigil on the comings and goings of Damikia, from the hometown of Constance. Fall of the highway, and the salt of Hugo Cupa, dominant of Titan and his private guards on the first hideaway of Sid the Outlaw in 873, safe haven established amongst forgotten ruins long consumed by the blight, was entirely destroyed. Many of Sid's collaborators and bearers have been freed from servitude or slain. Oh god. After Sid failed and the hideaway was reduced to rubble on the lands of Hugo Cupa, Clive took on both his predecessor's name and role becoming second Sid the outlaw and leader of the reestablished resistance. Together with the other survivors and their new recruits, continue Sid's mission to emas emancipate bearers and rid the realm of mother crystals. <clears throat> oh, our scar, our tattoo is gone. Nice, this is badass. Look at this journey. That's so cool. That's actually pretty badass. Oh, little Joshua. Dominant of the Phoenix and former heir to the Dugal throne, Joshua was thought to have died at the hands of the second icon of fire during the disaster of Phoenix Cake. However, he is very much alive, traveling the realm even now. His true identity hidden by a hid, hidden 
by a heavy cow and assumed name, that of Lord Margaris. Dominus, Shiva, trusted confidant of Clive, leader of the new hideaway, together they continue Sid's mission to emancipate bearers and rid the realm of Mother Crystals. Oh, she's so cute. So cute. Targa! Clive's faithful friend, he is fiercely protective of him and his allies. Loath as he is to lose his best friend again, and never strays far from Clive's side, putting the, hit, the hunting skills Sid taught him to use in fending off foes and picking up trails. Leader of the Hideaway and Domino, Ramal, Warden of Thunder, is planning to create a world where bearers and dominants can die on their own terms, meant destroying the Mother Crystals. An act of the blasphemy that would see him forever denounced as an outlaw. It was during their mission to fail, to fail Drake's head in 873 that Sidophus Telamon lost his life to a beast from the beyond, passing the title Sid the Outlaw to his pr protege Clive. Permanent economic advisor to the Dalmekian. Parliament, Parliament and dominant of Titan, he had little love for his country, taking advantage of his position to benefit himself and himself alone. After learning that Siddha the outlaw, the man who slew the, the love of his life, Benedica Harmon, still lives, he tasked his personal guard with capturing and torturing bearers in order to draw out his nemesis and take his revenge. The damn dirty bastard. I thought. Chief Steward of Clive's Hideaway, Otto, continues to serve the same realm he did under Sid, being the primary uh, person in charge of all Moni, Moni's and information coming, coming into and going out of the Hideaway. One of Sid's most trusted allies after Sid's hideaway was laid waste to Hugo Cupa and his uh, minions. She and her hard-working yet long-suffering apprentice Goats followed Clive to the new hideaway in Benamur, where they serve him in the same capacity they served his predecessor, sourcing whatever supplies her fellow residents are in need of. Goats. Princess to Charon, Sharon, or Karen? Karen? An ally of the hideaway, after Sid's hideaway was reduced to rubble at the hands of Hugo Cupa, he followed his non in uh, joining Clive at their new home at the lake. He has keen interest in smithing and spends what little spare time he is granted, eating and hammering metal, just as Blackthorn showed him. Nice. Resident of Blacksmith of Clyde's Hideaway, where he kept the new Sid the Outlaw and his allies well outfitted with arms and armor. Though he is usually a sullen and uh, secretive sort, his knowledge is his knowledge. He is happy to share with Goats, who has long been eager to learn the art of smithing. The hideaway's residence historian after Sid's death and the destruction of his home he joined Clive at that new hideaway. Establishing a grand library with the walls of the fallen ruins with from whence he continues to share his knowledge with anyone who would listen. He has taken the orphaned twi uh, twins Tet and Crow as his apprentices, though they not may not though they have yet to prove the most attentive audience. Obulus, an old friend of Otto's from his merchant seaman days, now serving as ferryman between the shores of Bunamur and Clive's hideaway, knowing him to be a trustworthy and tight-lipped fellow. Well, he seems like he's going to betray us. Just saying. Otto invited him to join the, the cause for Sid's death. He is trusted skiff 
might help them build and operate the new hideaway at the lake. It just has that face of untrustworthiness. Chief Cook of Sid's hideaway who lost his life on the night of the Hugo's Cupid's attack. He, he was well loved for his ever genial, oh he's dead, nature and the toothsome fare he con concocted from limited ingredients available in their deadland homes. Indeed many Kenneth's dishes remain on the menu in Clive's new hideaway. Aww. Tet, one of the uh, pair of young twins who assist Hippocrates in the hideaway library, or at least are tasked to. In practice, he spends most of his time reading books and teasing tomes with, the, with his sister Crow. Though their parents were both bearers, Tet was spared with the Baron, alas. He was not spared the tragedy of losing both his mother and father when Sid's hideaway was laid low. One of the pairs of the young crow, one pairs of the young twins who assisted Hippocrates in the hideaway library or at least tasked to in preparation. Spare prejudice because they were forced to suffer a loss not spared the tragedy. Yeah. The mysterious watcher, scion of a lesser noble family of Damikia, tasked by Hugo Cupas to trace the whereabouts of Sid the outlaw, the man he believes slew Benedicta Armin. His investigation leads him to Estepool, where he overhears Clive and Gab's conversation, follows them back to Sid's hideaway. Damn dirty bastard. An orphan girl who pays for her bread by making and selling medicines. Oh, we don't need to go through any of that. Men of the Rock. Damn, I'm still tired. <sighs> Could that be because I've been up for 29 hours and only had four hours sleep? Yep, maybe. You are always welcome, Clive. Shit. There's more there red dots. I might assist you with, Clive. You wish to study the tomes? I don't feel like going to this. Huh. Allows dominance to remain primed even when they're into the aetherless deadlands, but also results in Crystal's curse taking a heavy toll on them with every act of priming. Ooh. Interesting. Legend has it that the people of the Fallen once sailed through the skies of the bellies of the ships. Though it now lies sh uh, shattered and silent in the surface below the, the men and women of the present day are want, want to repurpose these ruins for their own uses. Both the village of Lostwig and Clive's Hideaway and Bunemure being built around the wreckage of a fallen airship. Mythos. The name by which Ultima addresses Clive it appears to be his title for the vessel of limitless power. And he means to make the young lord Marquis. But to uh, what end he requires such a thing, only Ultima knows. N Vessel, name that being known as Ultima gives to Clive, appears to be synonymous with mythos. Hmm. The Warden of Thunder whose power most lately most lately awakened in Sidophus Talamon, dominant of Akon, most ominous, 
most often emerge from descendants of the Moat of Thunder, a tribe who once dwelled in the lands of Central Ash, lands that the kingdom of Waylude, Waylude now lays claim to, may happen to part, may happen part to, do uh, part due to the tribe's comparatively advanced learning. Remu is associated with wisdom and judgment on this day. Typhoon, Typhon, Typhon, seemingly draws in the destruction of the heart of Drake's head. Ultimate emerged from a tear in reality, wearing a tear in reality, wearing the skin of Typhon, a withered and wizened colossus, and drew Clive into a space between worlds where the ethereal entity might rest, might test his worth as a vessel. Ew. The door to the shelves shall ever be open. Oh, yeah, damn, Skippy, it will. Ooh, jeez. Not back a blink, and you're already off solving everyone's problems. That's what and I it's do. Good life. Goes well with the scowl. I'd had that brand for so long. I'd forgotten what life was like without it. What it was like to be myself. And it's all thanks to you, Talia. The scalpel did most of the work. Ah, before I forget, a rider was here with a letter from Gav. Otto left it on your desk. Otto stole us. All right, I'll have a look. And then you get some rest. Yeah, you can't even tell there's a tattoo there at all. Big old hideous car. Have you been to the toll? I hear you shouldn't. What are you doing here? Otto was here earlier with a letter from Gav. He left it on your desk. Reports letter and important misses. Missives addressed to Clive are delivered to the reading table in his chambers. New messages are hot, are always arriving, so make it a point to check the reading desk upon returning to the hideaway. Republic's play. The Republican army marches on the Empire of tw uh, Twinside and the men of the Rock who have summoned to the front. Something big is brewing, I reckon. I'll see you're done. I'll see you're done. To wear upon my return. What does Gav have to say? Now your the business. The army is on the march, leaving Randala in Hugo Kuka's charge. Randala, with him and his men occupied with the defense of the capital, they're less likely to trouble us. Good news then. It's more than that. This is our chance, the one we've been waiting for. Thanks. But okay. look how far we've come. All that we have here, our friends, the hideaway, are they not cause for joy? Five years. Maybe. Five long years. If I could only command this power I've been granted, we might have achieved so much more. But each time I reach for it, it's like something is holding me back. Summoning an icon exacts a price not easily paid. Your body knows this only too well. It's merely trying to save you from yourself. And every burden I cannot bear falls to you. This mission of ours has made me question everything I thought I knew. But one thing has become abundantly clear. The crystals take more than they give. In exchange for momentary comfort, we must endure a lifetime of pain, war after war, loss upon loss. Damn. And now? Now they rob us of our very homes, leaving naught but dust and ash. And bones and blood. But you're trying to change that. We're trying to change that. 
And to me, that's no burden. I know, but... Try not to forget. We're only here because Joshua gave us a second chance. Joshua! Such a precious gift. My little bro! He did. He was there. Damn, now I'll catch an fire allergy. in your pocket? I heard him call out to Ultima. Yeah, you can't tell there's ever a tattoo there on his face. She did a great job. If Joshua is still alive, he'll be looking for that... that thing. Do you think he will ever come back? Maybe. I know he will. And we must be ready when he does. Drink. Drink. <laughs> to a world without mother crystals. To Sid. Sid, the vicious. From one side, stole his name and took his identity. Joshua uh -huh. Nice looking like Robin Hood And so the north is lost I knew that the blight spread ever more swiftly your grace, but this This is far far worse than any could have imagined This is only a matter of time before the twins are no more Is ever closer to its end, and here we chase shadows. Tell me, brother, are our efforts in vain? I don't know. Won't you go see him instead of just talking to the wind? Master Clive, a moment if you. Uh, my apologies, I didn't mean to intrude. Not at all. Uh, we were just discussing strategy. Speak freely, Otto. It's Martha, from the inn. She's gone missing. Anyway, I'll be in the mess when you've finished. Very well. Martha! The gathering storm. What would make Martha leave the rest? If something has happened to Martha, we need to speak with Otto. Otto the batapa, the 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 bat papa. Otto the bato. Just take the shortcut, just jump down. Run, damn you, run. We need to get like walkie talkies, man. What do we know, Otto? Hold on, you were Some just in the room. The Imperial garrison in Rosaria started a fight over at Martha's Rest. Blood was spilled, bones were broken. The usual. The summer in the middle of it all, Martha vanished without a word to anyone. 
And that ain't like her, Clive. Something's not right. You think this was planned? Of course it bloody was. Ever since Eastpool, the Empire's been tightening its grip around the Duchy's balls. They've strung up everyone who's ever set eyes on a runaway, claiming they're traitors to the Holy Throne, conspiring to restore the House of Rosfield to power. I know it sounds like the bastards have turned their attentions to the poor bearers meek enough to stay put. Naturally, old Martha could see the way the wind was blowing, complained that it was getting harder and harder to take bearers in. And now she's missing. Yeah. If she's fallen into the hands of the Empire, we could be next. Couple of curse breakers are already on their way to the inn. They should help speed up the search. But if this is as bad as I think it is, you might end up having to save their asses and all. Don't worry, Otto. I'll make sure everyone gets home safe. It's not that I don't trust Cole to do his bit, you understand? It's that I don't trust the Empire to show any of us any mercy if we get in their way. Clive, uh, Sid, Cole and his men left earlier. I can have another party ready. If you I find it weird that they call him Sid. Martha is a survivor. We'll find her. Here for another of my lectures. Where's Martha? What is it that you wish to learn? Allow me to explain. Again. Study it well, Clive. Thus ends today's lesson. I don't understand. Pretty sure I read all that. I'm pretty sure. Barely got here. When are you going to take a nap? Finish with that open box, Ed. Damn blighted bilge. Is everything all right? Aside from the holes in my hull, everything's roses. <laughs> The lake water doesn't agree with it, then. That's one way of putting it. But unless you got some grand scheme to suck the black from the lake like we do in the atrium, that slurry will keep eating away at the timber like young Tech does our lemon tarts. <laughs> I suppose a coat of pitch might stave off the rock for a moment. That's the second time so. they said that about Tech. Assuming we had any pitch, which we don't. Not any bloody more. Doubt the old tub's got more than a dozen runs left in him. Sometimes you find... Sometimes... No one finds you pitch. Of course, Obelus. Your skiff is our only means of reaching the mainland. Without it, we'd be lost. Well, I'm glad someone round here sees it that way. To make pitch, you need pitch trees. But in case you haven't noticed, live trees are one of the thousand things sorely lacking in the Deadlands. Now, God. I'm not so unkind as to ask you to fell a faraway forest and lug the logs back here to the mere. 
Which is why we'll be needing a suitable alternative. And it just so happens I once heard the thorny pictures of Curl Tail Falls cover themselves in a sticky wax to trap birds and beetles and whatnot. Might be enough to tide me over. Nice. Sounds easier than felling a faraway forest. That's for certain. Cock and bra. Never been to Curl Tail Falls myself. <laughs> Never seen a curl for that matter. Mm -hmm. Not that I want to. I heard they'll tear a man from cock to crown soon as look at him. Good thing all we need is some wax from a thorny pitcher. How hard can that be? Hmm? Oh, that can't be hard at all. Oh, I missed something. I missed something, governor. Cock and ball. <laughs> Cock and balls. Do with a drink. Chat with Maeve. How am I getting on? Ah, oh, about as well as you'd expect of a barmaid pouring sour ale for penniless outlaws in the middle of the Deadlands. <laughs> and it'd be worse than that if Molly here didn't make the best stew this side of Stone here, even if it is mostly just yesterday's leavings. Mm -hmm. Don't tell her you heard that from me, though. No, I won't say nothing. Well, someone's in a good mood. I'm gonna buy a round for everybody. Drink up, you lot. The next round's on Sid. Are we gonna get tipsy? Like in Grand Theft Auto? Oh, you're not leaving already, are you? Welcome back, Sid. Holy shit, 10,000? I thought it said a thousand. Don't be a stranger, Sid. I wonder if we can get drunk. What can I get you, Sid? Shout if you need topping up. We can hold our drink, that's for sure. That's for sure. Oh, it's the Okay, so now that we're fully caught up, I'm gonna end this right now because I got things to do. I gotta go take care of business. <sighs> we did a whole bunch of uh, reading and catching up on the five years that has passed. Wow, that was a lot.
I'll be back later on today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode. It's a shorter episode, yes, but it took a while to catch up on everything. And we'll be back, and we're going to be getting into some major action, guys. Major action. First, we got to get that wax. Then we got to freaking find the curse breakers. Like all good things, got to come to an end. Till next time, buds. I'll catch you in the Maniacs Club. Peace.